you must gather your party before venturing forth. Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome, welcome, welcome to our special Thursday live stream where we are playing Baldur's Gate 3! Hey! Oh man, uh, there's been so much hype for this game. And normally I think too much hype is a bad thing. I think it's kind of deserved for this one. Um, I guess that's what happens when you do like a three year early access period and really work out like user interface, gameplay, quality of life stuff. Hopefully the story like delivers throughout. Um, I'm really excited. I am technically playing on the press pre-release version still. This may not be the exact release version. I just wanted to say that, but I didn't want to have to do a re-download um, right before the stream started. So I made sure I was in the game, no patches downloading or anything like that. So we could start ASAP because the embargo has officially lifted. And uh, man, I'm so excited. Yeah, restart Steam. If you haven't seen the download, do ch double check that you're downloading the full version, which is going to be a hundred and something gigs, as opposed to the pre-release version, which is 50 something. Because um, if you have the pre-release version installed, first of all, their, their advice was to uninstall it and remove it. But also, if you do still have it, as far as we can tell, it still probably works OK. But there's this like super long patching process that assuming you've got a decent Internet, it's because you're going to have to read. You're basically redownloading the whole game anyway. And then you're saving yourself this like obscenely long patching process to get everything up and running. So it's probably faster to delete it and redownload it properly. Uh, early access 72 ish gigabytes. Now it's at 98 gigabytes. Yeah, it should be. It should be a little more than 100, I would think. Yeah, it is a big, beefy game. I can also say, definitely, it, you want to install it on, on an SSD or an M2 kind of thing, like a solid state drive, if you have the option. Um, because, uh, yeah, I mean, the patching, if nothing else, will be a lot faster, but load times and stuff. It's a, it's a chunky boy, is, is what this game is. But uh, let's hope the content uh, pays off. So we're going to go ahead and dive in. Uh, do check the exclamation mark what game. Um, there is a link there to make sure your Twitch account is linked to your game account so that you can get drops, which is just some sort of like crazy, funky, pump purple outfit. Honestly, maybe not the end of the world if you don't get it, but technically uh, there are some drops available over here and maybe there'll be more in the future. So you'll be happy that everything is set up OK. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and start this. I'm going to let the cutscene play. We're going to uh, justify the volume later. Right now, I'm just going to make sure it's maxed for the voice. There's not a movie one. I don't know which one it is, but I'll just set this to 100 for now. And then I'm going to shut the hell up as we watch the cutscene. But I'm sure it's the one we've already seen before. Um, this will be the Nautiloid attack in the city. But in case anyone hasn't seen it for completeness, we'll put that in there. Oh, we'll play in balance difficulty. Quiet right now. Too quiet. Oh, me. I guess this isn't a Nautiloid attack. I guess that's what happens when you load the game. This is the Igor one. Ooh. <laughs> you might. Some of you might want to look away for this. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. Hey, Teal-Bite. You know, I was trying to look away from the main screen, but I've got my OBS screen over here that I'm looking at now. It's just too well done. We've all made it through. 
Oh, wow. That is, it's so freaking disturbed. So well done, but so disturbed. Reminds me of Alien. Yeah, it reminds me of the, um, like the old Alien versus Predator game where when the face hugger would get you, it would actually go up on your screen like, Bleh. terrifying. All right, so I already know what I want to play. I want to play a wood elf druid. Um, I'm very into that. I'm going to save the Dark Age play, Dark Urge playthrough for something else. I might do like Dark Urge Paladin Oathbreaker at some point, uh, but that'll be like second playthrough stuff. Here we're going to play, you know, uh, a classic sort of goodly-ish adventure. We're going to be playing a diplomatic druid, actually. So we're going to play as elf. Specifically Wood Elf. Now, in the build I have, and maybe the build you guys will have, it lists the Wood Elf Sudrace feature as simply the movement speed up increase. However, like in the early access build, you do still get um, um, uh, stealth proficiency for free as a Wood Elf specifically, uh, which surprised me. I actually made a video. Oh, that reminds me. Hold on. Hang on, hang on a second. I have to add a comment to my own video here because I just made live a little video uh, where I talk about uh, a variety of Druid builds, actually. Yeah, right here. Hang on, you might get audio from YouTube for just a second. And I wanted to make a little post to let people know that, because in there, I was like, I was lamenting that the Wood Elves lost their, uh, their stealth proficiency, but it turns out we still get it, so we'll see. Diplomatic Druid ultimate move, wild shape into Diplodocus. <laughs> All right, so our class Druid is what we're going to be. Um, and we are going to be, I'm going to be playing uh, a particular druid that was inspired by a World of Warcraft character I played for oh so many years. Um, okay, we're going to talk about these cantrips. We're going to, I feel like you want someone in your party with guidance, right? Because being able to add a D4 bonus to ability checks and conversations and stuff like that is too important. Now, I'm probably going to play with Chatterheart, but uh, by the way, I have basically restricted myself from reading any news, reading any spoilers. I've also never played the game past what you can reach in an hour, maybe two. Like I've gotten to like the little, the Druid Tiefling village and I booped some goblins in another village. And that's pretty much it. Super early game stuff because I, I intentionally, I didn't want to burn out too much in the game. I didn't want to spoil myself for the real uh, playthrough either. Um, now, but I mean, obviously we're going to, we're going to talk about some light presentations. I mean, you run into Shadowheart like, 3.5 seconds into the game. So I don't think that the existence of this character, but that's a cleric. Um, and if she starts with guidance, then maybe it's redundant for us to have it, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to do that. I know that there's some sort of respecking stuff that you can get later on. I think a lot of flexibility so we can, we can redo a lot of this stuff. If uh, we find that there's some uh, redundancy now for the second cantrip here, um, poison spray is quite powerful, but I, I don't like the vibe. It's not where I want to go. Produce flame always seems as like, a little bit dubiously useful to me compared to some other things. Maybe it's quite good. I mean, um, it does give you light, but, and it, you know, 1d8 fire damage, and I think you can throw it immediately. Yeah, it doesn't cost an action, or you can use it later on as an action. I mean, it's 1d8 fire, it's thrown, so I'm assuming it uses dex as opposed to your wisdom modifier, whereas uh, Thorn Whip, which does slightly reduce damage, it also has only a 9 meter range, should use wisdom uh, completely. Uh, we could also get Shillelagh early on. Um, which might be good. I mean, ultimately, we're going to want to do combat in a shapeshifted form, but we don't get that right away. So I'm wondering about Shillelagh early on um, versus Thorn Whip. Ah, I, I, think, I think I'm going to. So Shillelagh does huge damage because it's a D8 plus three. That's a su substantial amount of damage. And he uses her spellcasting ability for attack roll. So we'll use our wisdom stat for that, which is going to be our best one. So I think I'll probably do that. Uh, you're not seeing any kind of Twitch drop process. Okay, it's supposed to start clicking. Um, but maybe sometimes these Twitch drop campaigns, they have issues to, to get it initialized. We'll see. Now, for my background, I'm going to go Guild Artisan. Now, Guild Artisan and the description, right? Your skill in a particular craft earn you membership in a mercantile guild offering privileges and protection while engaged in your art. Preparing and discovering rare crafts will bring you inspiration. The Druid and like Guild Artisan thematically does feel a little bit of mismatch. But here's the thing. First of all. I want the skills that Guild Artisan gives me. I want insight and persuasion for this character because here's my thing. I want my main character to have that main character energy. I want my main character to be the person generally leading conversations, which means I, I want some amount of social skills going in here. Um, a min-max build for a druid might dump Charisma, leave it at an eight, because who cares? But I'm going to be uh, using a Charisma of 14, and I'm going to want to be fairly talkative because I want that as my main character. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. 
5e description produced fame says it makes a ranged attack roll, so it would use wisdom. Well, ranged attack roll by default would be dexterity. So unless it says like a ranged spell attack roll, then it would use your primary characteristic. But I don't know. We don't know about in the in-game over here. Anyway, we're going to go with Shillelagh, so it's going to be fine. Um, but here's the thing. So yeah, with Guild Artisan, the skills are good. Also, I know I'm going to want to craft, and um, this we can get inspiration here from repairing, discovering rare crafts. It's going to feel really good. It's really what I want to do. And in my idea, like in this case, the Guild Artisan is probably, you know, maybe maybe this character, who's, by the way, their name is the Lures, um, which is just sort of French for of the bear. Um, maybe they're like, maybe they make stabs, like they're wood carver, that kind of thing, you know, that kind of craft. So I think I think it kind of vibes. It's, you know, a little different from the disruption, but I think I can make it work in my head. And in any case, stat wise, I think it's exactly where I want to be. Oh, you meant range spell attack. That's it. OK, so, yeah. So, yeah, then maybe produce flamed is does use wisdom. But I think we'll still shillelagh because I think this character's role will be to front line. I mean, mostly in animal form. Um, so there might be an in-between period where we do a little bit of range stuff. I mean, as an elf, we will have longbow proficiency. And for my vibe for this character, I'm not really looking to use swords and longbows. I want—I really want to stick to a lot of the traditional druidy weapons, but we'll probably have to use some bows early on. So I'll be able to do range attack that way. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to dump strength. The reason is uh, we are, well, we, we may do some melee with shillelagh, but our shillelagh is not going to require any strength whatsoever. Um, and when we turn into our animal form, our strength, dexterity, and constitution, our physical stats are all going to be based on our animal form. As such, we could consider dropping dexterity and constitution. However, I don't think I'm gonna. Um, in terms of wisdom, it is our primary stat, but we don't actually need a 17. A 16 and a 17 both give you exactly the same benefit of a plus three to your rolls. So by pulling back to a 16, it actually frees up uh, two ability points over here, which is nice. And I'm gonna be wanting to put those into charisma because again, I want my main character energy. I want my main character to be able to hold conversation. We've got one more ability point left. It's not gonna affect any pluses. I'll put into strength just, I don't know how this game calculates carry capacity, but a little bit more strength might give us a little bit more carry capacity. So we'll just put the oddball in there and that's gonna be fine. Uh, when we get to level four and we can pick a feat, most likely I'm just gonna be doing plus two to wisdom, but we'll see. So I don't think a low intelligence is gonna be an issue for us. Um, we're gonna to have to rely on other characters to pass knowledge checks, but that's gonna be okay. So like knowledge nature over here, I'm gonna change knowledge nature instead of that, I'm gonna go with survival. So survival and animal handling to me are gonna be our druid sides. We're not we are not necessarily book learned. We haven't um, researched like uh, plant taxonomy or something like that, right? We don't have the book learning side of nature but <laughs> recognize plants and animals, hug trees, but we're gonna have the survival and the animal handling. We're gonna have the practical aspect of being able to live like one in nature rather than write a treatise about it. I wish there was an ability to care isn't mine. <laughs> Does the primary stat affect the number of spells you can cast? Um, I actually don't rem I believe it affects the number of spells you can prepare, but I don't believe it affects the number of casts. Um, it's I, my primary uh, tabletop D&D &D has been third edition, well, 3.5, uh, but I have played a decent amount of 5e, but there's going to be some little gaps in my knowledge there. But yeah, I was pretty sure 5e, your primary stat affects how many spells you can prepare, but not how many you can cast per day. That is fixed, which does make it less critical for your primary attribute in a sense, but we still want a good value here because it affects the the DC of your saving throws or the, um, the accuracy of your, um, of your attacks with the spells or something like that. So this is the vibe. So we get stealth. And again, see, even though it no longer lists it in the description for the Wood Elf sub race, we do, in fact, get stealth proficiency from our race. I suspect it's the description that's wrong, but it's entirely possible that at some point there'll be a patch that says, whoops, Wood Elves aren't supposed to get stealth anymore. So it's being removed. It's not the end of the world if we lose stealth proficiency, but it's kind of nice to have. Um, so we're going to take it. And yeah, we're getting insight and persuasion from our, see this number hasn't updated either, right? It's saying plus three, but that's clearly wrong. I think that's just a visual thing here. If I just toggle my uh, my background for a sec and then go back here, there you go. Now it's correctly calculated. We have a persuasion of plus four because we get two from charisma, two from our proficiency, which is good. So persuasion will be good for chitty chatty. Insight is gonna be good for chitty chatty things, which is great. Um, it would be nice. Uh, oh no, and that's right. Oh wait, wait, hold on, I'm asking perception from my race. I think the elf side of it. So we're getting quite a lot of free stuff. 
uh, in here, even though it wasn't the skill stuff wasn't really described anywhere. So I don't know. Chat, we have to tell Quill every time he fails to be stealthy. I'm bad at stealth in games, generally speaking. I often don't do it. Um, you know, why stealth when you can just run in and smash everything? But we'll see. Anyway, I'm happy with this, right? We can start off six skill proficiencies. Um, perception, very important. Some chatting, some nature lorey kind of stuff uh, without the actual nature skill. Uh, and stealth as a bonus, which is great. So I'm pleased with this. I don't mind the default look that we've ended up over here. Except to me... Um, Dolores, the, again, my character from, from World of Warcraft and stuff, is an older elf. He's been around for a while. There's a certain amount of wisdom that has gone on here. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of the maturity filter to start off with. You know, somewhere here, around a few wrinkles. Do I want to change his base face? Let's take a look around here. Maybe? No. No? That was fine, maybe? No. No. Maybe I do go with head one. Hey, Quill, it just looks a little older. I think there's like more pronounced. Yeah, the uh, the cheekbones are a little more pronounced. The, the, the cheek here is a little bit more sunken in. Um, I think that's what I, I, I think that's what I want. I also think I'm going to change my hair at least. The skin tone I'm OK with wood tone four over here, because I always thought of this character as having sort of a woodsy skin color. I'm kind of OK with the four. It's, it's a kind of green. Do I want a little bit more of a brown? That's quite reddish. A lot of these are, are quite a bit more red than I thought. I mean, I know we can go and unlock all the skin colors. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. It was here. You know what, I think I'll do it with this one. Sort of skin like bark. I mean, maybe it is a little orc green, huh? Is there a better brown? Earth tones? Now see, it's so red. Like clay. Not sulfur. Chili. No. I think we'll do that. And then, okay, let's check the hair because that is gonna, that's gonna change how we feel about the skin as well. So not ginger, I was thinking like brown hair. Um, I mean, this brown gold, well, I don't hate Quill, that. Pay attention, there's a new subscriber. There's plain brown. I think we'll need some highlights and stuff. Let's give him a little bit of something. First of all, we will throw a little bit of gray in here. Yeah, there we go. Just a few little wisps. Maybe, maybe I got a few of those going on too. I don't know. But what about highlights? Do we throw a little orange in? I see, I see, this the highlights is like this streak here, which I don't know about that. A little dark green. Oh, you know what? Just a little whisper of green in there, along with the gray. Yeah, Frozen Lemon, you like that? Yeah, me too, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, we haven't actually explored the other hairstyles, although I like this hairstyle. So, first of all, where is it? Okay, it's Fair Forester, fairly near the bottom. No, but oh, cool. Woo! Oh, I do like some, some physics. That's not bad, but it's someone else, you know? This is fairly legacy. I mean, it's similar to Fair Forester, right? It's just tucked behind the ears versus in front of the ears. Prepared for three hours of this. Bardic Inspiration. I like this for a different character. I've, been, I've made a few characters with the Bardic Inspiration look, um, especially uh, I've got a couple of female characters that look awesome and badass with this haircut. It's not terrible. I do want, I wanted to have long hair. The braid's not a bad look. I think I'm still happy with the uh, the starting hairstyle. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm very pleased with the Fair Forester here. I think I like that.
I mean, it helps that this works with the colors we've chosen, right? I think if we um, if we chose a different cut, I think I'd change some of the hair coloring, but I think I'm pleased with this balance. Um, eyes, I do want to change. I like the elf silver two eyes. Kind of piercing, clear, wise. I'm a big fan of that. Um, you know, I look. Some of this makeup wouldn't be awful. I mean, we could even do this, but with less intensity. A little darkening around the eyes. Oh, I kind of like this. It, it makes his eyes pop a little bit more, you know? Yeah, obviously the diplomat. Yeah, just, just a little darkening. A little more shading around here. Doesn't look like makeup, just looks like darker skin. I mean, that's the thing, right? When you get your makeup to not look like makeup, get that smoky eye going on. Exactly. Next, we're going to smize. Um, yeah, I think I don't think we'll go with any lip tint. This is looking fine to me. Hair, eyes, body art, no. And again, you can you can totally pull back on this intensity a lot. And actually, on the glow level, it's kind of interesting because it's just adding the hint of shade over here rather than art. And it can add some extra definition to things, but I think I'm going to go with no body art. So I think this is where we're going. Are you going to subclass? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I don't think there's a choice, right? I think they were, they're just, you pick a subclass at, I think level three for the druid. And I'm going to go for the, um, uh, whichever one it's called where you're, you're, you're focusing on, on shape shifting. Or earring options. Uh, right. I guess that would be the piercings over here. I don't think I want earrings for this character. Yeah, I don't think I want any. Oh, second level for the circle. Okay. Some classes take their um, their specialization at three, some take it at two. And I don't think I've ever played an actual druid in 5e. I've played a lot of characters. I don't think I've ever played a druid in 5e. Elves with facial tattoos make me think of Dragon Age rather than Nindy. Mm. Oh, right. I, clerics do take their um, their their domain at, at one. That's true. Which kind of makes sense. Because it's sort of like really focusing their god and their religion. Okay. Um, I think I'm happy with this. Screenshot. Proceed. So we'll be choosing our name and our guardian. So it's so funny in the early access one where their character name was hidden. Like, well, it's not hidden. It's just the very first tab as you enter the character creator and almost everyone forgot to change it. So, so many people, their first character in early access was named Tav. To the point where on like the Baldur's Gate subreddit and everything like that, Tav is just how we refer to like the, 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 the player character, the main character. As opposed to like with Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, uh, usually people would refer to him as care name, car name. So this is Dolores. Next, we pick the Guardian. Now, this is interesting. I don't know what this represents in the game because I haven't gone to that point. Um, oh yeah, more subs. Thank you very much, uh, Why the Foo. We'll, uh, we'll take a, a pause at some point and go ahead and read all the subs and resubs. But I do want to, I mean, we're 24 minutes in, we're still in the character creator, but that's pretty standard. So when, I think when you, uh, in the early access, when you load it up, it was like, oh, who do you, who do you dream of at night? I'm like, okay, some sort of like, some sort of romance thing. But now it's like specifies a guardian, which is quite cool. And here's the thing, as much as like the custom, I, I, I'm kind of curious, like what would it mean to have a drow guardian? Some people say drow, which is fine but I think most people say drow. Like, what? Or do I just go with another elf? Do I do something completely different? Maybe we we'll go with halfling as a guardian. Maybe I should just randomize it a whole bunch of times. I don't want to know what this represents. So I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I, you know, am I going to be really unhappy with whatever develops here? Elf with an orc guardian, yeah. So I'm tempted to just stick with the drow. I'm a little worried, like, if, I'm assuming there's no initial randomization here, so I don't really want my guardian to look the same as absolutely everyone else. But I have to admit, that's a pretty cool look. Though I guess I could go. Bye.
got ourselves a treat stream. A spicy Hawaiian pizza. Got to feed the bear. Feed the bear. Yes. Thank you. You know, we got, you can do something like this. Although, you know, with that hair color, I'm almost wondering. You know, are we more of a, oops. Are we more of a this? Let's randomize a few times and see what happens. No. It is randomizing the species and everything, huh? I don't know. I might just... Oh, wait! You can't go back to your character? You can you can go backwards and forwards through the randomizations, but you can't go back to what it was before you randomized? Ugh. All right. I'm going to go ahead with the drow idea because I'm curious as to what the heck this represents, and I'm interested in the... the sort of mismatch things. Again, I've avoided so many spoilers about stuff. Um, see, that's that's like too pretty, the hair. No. I want something with a little bit of edge. Not not the freaking Romulan haircut, though. The wild hair is kind of cool. I don't know. Um, where's Bardic Inspiration? I think I like this better. Uh, Tabir, you like this one? Yeah, I like it too. All right. It's time to venture forth. There shouldn't be a command for the drops. It should just be watching it, but it's possible it's not enabled yet. That's something that uh, Twitch and Larian have to do on their end. It was supposed... The drops were supposed to start at 11 a.m., but... Websites have to start 9 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah. Oh! Oh, 9 a.m. Pacific. So, noon. Yes. Oh, so it'll start in half an hour. Okay. So the drops start an hour after the game goes live slash embargo is lifted. Okay. Oh, wait. Now we get this cutscene. Okay. Let me guess it makes sense. Well, uh, Teal Bite, it helped that I, ha I had a plan for the character, right? I had a very good plan. I knew what my build was going to be, and I, I knew in my head what the look was supposed to be. Because I've spent a lot of time in the character creator uh, over the last few days. So that's why the character creation was actually fairly quick. 28 minutes in. He wants sushi now, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll have to get a stream with just essentially playing the character creator. Argons! I never played uh, Spelljam or anything like that, so I, I was never really into the Gith Yankee and Gith Zaray lore or anything like that, but I have to say, like, them riding the back of these dragons coming after this Nautiloid, really badass. Carnate, or do you think this creation stream should have been longer? Yeah. <laughs> Boing! <laughs> I really... I want, I want to, like, mod the game so there's a little boing sound there when they thrum the, uh, like, neural tendrils or whatever that is. I mean, this is 10 out of 10 cutscene. I mean, normally you have to go to Blizzard for cutscenes like this. And then crappy gameplay. Uh, Magic Gun, today is the release of Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, half an hour ago, it was released. Dragon's popping its head in. Hey, what's going on in here?
yeah, the environmental effects in this cutscene, the lighting, I mean, obviously it's all pre-rendered, but, like, still, that is a hell of a render. Yeah, Jazeem, I really enjoyed Divinity Original Sin 2. Admittedly, the story's not, like, the tightest, but great gameplay, so much character customization, and a decent story overall. Good characters in it, too. So we're in hell right now. Which is better cutscene, this or the Bancho Sushi? Oh my god! Bancho and uh, Dave the Diver. So good. Alright, wakey wakey. I'm too old for this shit. So you can see the version number up there. I believe that's because I'm playing on the press pre-release version. Again, I didn't want to... Uh, well, I would have had to not start the stream at 11 and then do a full update cycle. And there was a patch this morning to my version. But it might not be the same one you guys play. At the very least, I suspect your version number won't be showing up like that. All right. So it's click and move. Feeling good? You guys will have to let me know about sound levels as we go here. I'd still be stuck inside if we hadn't been attacked. You know, like that. And hold Alt to get to some pop-ups. This doesn't show everything you can interact with. Mostly shows lootable containers. Yeah, when I uh, when I moved to the um, to the release version, um, went to the actual release version, my saves should transfer over. Yeah, yeah. Because I am, I'm, I'm basically on the release version. It's not the early access one. I should move my faceage to over there. Dead. Good. Someone else got out. I'll try to click on all the things. I mean, obviously I've been through the Nautiloid a bunch in early access. Um, and I did go and poke around with it with this release version. Um, they've redone the Nautiloid since the early access, which is nice. This is the pool that Bing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. So we're going to try investigate, although we do have a minus one to it. So odds are not in our favor. But we do have the guidance cantrip, so we can add a d4. Oh, I'm going to call that not successful. Explode in three, two, one. Oh, I guess it doesn't explode until I reach. Why would I do this, though? Like, look at his face. It's like <laughs> part of his head is like he's having intrusive thoughts of like. Touch the pool, touch the pool. And then he's like, no, I, I don't I don't think so. I don't I don't think I'm going to touch the pool. I mean, I, I think all it does is it, the like, pool that um, came from. I think it just hey, Quill, pay attention I don't to the subscriber. But for those of you who want to see. Oh, I broke concentration, lost my guidance. All the cool kids touched the pool. <laughs> and yeah, there's still these restoration chambers. I think they effectively give you a long rest. I think they reset your spells and everything, too, when that happens. All right, let's pass through the sphincter. Goblin, but not part of the uh, not part of the battle. Oh, we can sit in the viscous chair. We are here. Yeah. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. What? Oh, you don't read it. It's a mental thing. I guess that makes sense. Check this Eldritch tablet over here before we take the elevator. Cerebral Aquarium. Mind flare horticulture. A thousand years of humanoid history. Elves, dwarves, humans, and more flash behind your eyes. Really? Mm -hmm. 
we are here. Reminds me of little turrets from Portal. Hey, Sema, thanks for the sub. By the way, uh, there's a subscriber-only Discord, so if you subscribe, uh, you can link your Discord to Twitch, and uh, you should get an auto-invite to the channel, where we're always very serious and don't goof around. I've not seen the, the TikTok with the bloopers. In theory, Twitch integration is enabled. You've come to save us from this place. But I guess I'm not seeing the overlay. This place you'll free us. The exposed brain. The app might not be on a. Uh... Please. Before they return. They return. Uh, I guess. Hold on. I have to add that, don't I? Where. I don't remember where activate the apps on Twitch. Oh, extensions. Baldur's Gate. No, the companion is added. Configure. Enable your the Twitch integration in-game settings menu and set your streams category Baldur's Gate through if the extensions show up. All right, well, I've done all that, but I'm not sure that it's working. So in theory, there should be an extension where you guys will be able to like mouse over um, yeah, good screen to stop on it, uh, um, and get the party information and stuff. But yeah, <clears throat> maybe it's the press build, but I mean, it's in the options, but yeah, maybe it's disabled in the press build. So yes, please, before they return, they return. You can get, uh, yeah, more dialogue history here if we've missed it. Yes, you've come to save us from this place, from this place you'll free us. Expose Bane, brain quivers in anticipation. Um... What am I talking to? A man or a brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect. Arcana! Power, a minion of the mind. Yeah, because I have like a minus one. You. you sound afraid. Why? Kiss for luck. You gotta read Twitch chat. Look up like five lines. Come on, you're a bad viewer. <laughs> the enemy. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's new so subscribers. Hmm. I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body, from this case. Free us, please. So let's uh. We can try to yoink it out. If we succeed, we get a pet for a little while. Here's the thing. So we're going to this is the first time we're going to have to make we're making a decision, basically, for our character here, Delores, and how what they think and what they, you know, how they feel about stuff. We are definitely going to be a good leak type character, right? So, I mean, mind flares, bad. Their creations, probably not a good idea. On the other hand, you know, do we do? How do we value life? Like, is a, a do we? Do we um, shun a predator? Do we shun a wolf for eating a deer? You know, for killing a deer? No, that's the way it works. What about parasites? Well, I mean, I guess they're sort of allowed to exist, although um, a parasite infecting a living host, the living host has the right above the parasite. So we will cure someone of a parasite, for example. But here, this person's clearly dead, right? They are an X person. So in this case, because we don't really know too much yet, we'll be we'll be willing to give this the benefit of the doubt. Again, we're going to be diplomatic and give things the benefit of the doubt. Um, but it will be a, sort of the. Um, what's that game theory thing? Is it tit for tat, right? You know, you start off with cooperating and if some, the other person like defects, then you defect back. And that'll be the same sort of thing over here. We'll give things a chance until they prove otherwise. So let's go ahead and try to roll the uh, the dexterity to gently prize the brain from the skull. And again, guidance. Roll them bones. Yay! Huge success. 18, what a beautiful number. The brain lifts from the skull. That person's twitching, but that person is dead. You could At this point, the person is the brain. Making it more 
subservient right. should it prove a threat. I do I did turn off karmic dice. I'll double check. Oh. Hey Backtroid! I was hoping you'd stream BG3, and I wasn't disappointed. The brain lifts from the skull, but you notice an opportunity. You could cripple a strange creature, making it more subservient should it prove a threat. I, I, I feel like that would be I feel like that would be unethical for us at this point. We're not gonna preemptively try to hurt or cripple something like this. Yeah, I know karmic dice are apparently not as bad as they, they were. There were issues previously. But I've still turned it off. We're gonna play like raw rules here. We are free. Our freedom is ours. Look at a cute little puppy. The creature pauses. Who could hurt this thing? Something behind Give it a little scritch. Seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm. At the helm, we are needed. What's at the helm? The brain tenses, as though querying an unseen advisor. Do you not hear it? We will not survive here. Hey, Quill, pay attention. Here. There's a new subscriber. We are hey, Ty. To navigate. We are needed to leave this realm. No. All right, let's go. Lead, lead the way. You know, we've got a little puppy guiding us. To the helm we go. We are going to the home. I shall call you Brian. Brian the Brain. All right. I don't think there's... Yeah. Uh, did I just leave you behind? Okay, because I can control you manually. Yump! Whee! I took a little bit of falling damage, that's fine. Who will ever believe this? Can't slow down. Nyarb. Brain backwards. Called oh, Pinky. Or maybe I'm Pinky, right? Pinky in the brain. Yeah, their health used to be like 20, 25. Like they had ridiculous hit points. Visions rush past, a dragon swing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. There's like so much detail in the face. What is this? Squaw, you are no thrall. Blacketh blesses me this day. Together, and she has cool armor. I mean, like these gems and stuff. I, I don't know how functional things are, but that is really cool looking armor. What made you think I was a thrall? We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be gay. Mind flayers. Yeah, it sounds bad. We're turning into mind flayers? There must be something we can do. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. As for that thing, it will remain tame as long as it believes we are thralls. It may be of use in the fight to come. I mean, gross, but also like, and 10 out of 10, these visuals, and these are not pre-rendered cutscenes, that's in-game stuff. I mean, I have a decent video card, obviously. I think I've got all the graphics settings set to max. All right, before we get into combat here, let's double check uh, options. Do, do, do. Yes, I have the nudity and genitals turned off for, for live stream safety and things like that. Um, exploration highlights, choose whether or not characters are highlighted with an outline. Maybe we might end up turning that on. So I do have karmic dice off, even though apparently they're they're much better now. But you know what? We'll we'll just whatever the dice fall, they happen. You can see here, Twitch integration is supposed to be connected, but um, and yeah, under video here, well, I've got it on custom, but it's 
pretty high on everything. Mostly, hopefully, I don't know. Karmic dice is basically, if you miss a bunch of times in a row, it'll fudge the dice to mean sure of success and maybe vice versa. And I think one of the issues in early access was that, let's say you had really high armor class, right? And it was really hard for enemies to hit you. Be they would also benefit from karmic dice. So if they missed you a couple of times, then they'd fudge a die roll that would be guaranteed to hit. But because they needed to roll so high, those hits were often going to be crits. So there's this really weird thing where you were taking more damage than you should with the karmic dice. Apparently that has been corrected, but we'll just play without it because why not? Uh, okay, yeah, brain's back up to 21 hit points. Interesting. So it looks like we all have uh, initiative at the same time right now. We all rolled uh, similar amounts, or we may not have ended up with the same initiative number, but um, I think maybe as long as there's no enemies in between, then we can uh, act sort of as one unit and pick and choose what we're gonna do here. So, um, you got the claw, you got hide, jump, disengage, pretty straightforward here. Why don't you go and just run over here and claw that? 90% chance to hit. Damn, brain! Excellent, we didn't get x -commed. I'm gonna finish the brain's movement over here and do that. Um, right, so end your turn. And a shillelagh, is it a, it is a bonus action. Excellent. Let's go ahead and shillelagh yourselves up. And we do get a cool glowing stick now. Actually, our whole body's glowing. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Cut it to the chase. Good stuff. I'm gonna pull back a little here. Let it come to me. With haste. Victory awaits. Uh, we can't reach you. Hamstring strength. Rush attack. Yeah, I can knock things off too, but it doesn't. Oh, it does add her movement. Excellent. I mean, she's got a bow as well, but charge! Oh, it looked cool too. Nice. And if it's got a built-in knockback, that's excellent. No, now we loot. Father, can I go? Uh, Jolly Roger, yeah, the, the, apparently, uh, currently the karmic dice are fine if you leave them on. There was an issue with them in early access. Apparently it's fine now, but I'm just playing with it off. Just because if we miss a whole bunch, it's funny. <laughs> right? We can curse at the bad rolls. Loot, 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 loot all the bodies. So this fight is different from early access because there used to be crates and stuff in this room. Or, uh, or the room you fought the imps. Now we got the like giant holes that we can look at like the landscape underneath. Actually a much cooler room to fight in. Much more, much more interesting and unique than what we had. And restoration that, that's fine. And then the other thing is uh, this, it's just a lot shorter. We don't go outside. There's not all the random corpses all over. I talked over some dialogue. Um, Chip won't be able to take another dragon attack. We need to get out before it's too late. All right. Arterial mesh. Mm. Um, there is apparently a lot of like knockback and stuff that you can do in places. Unless there's an invisible wall here, it might be possible to knock someone off. There might be an invisible wall in those places so that you can't get knocked off because that would be a pretty frustrating way to lose the game, right? But in other places where there's ledges and stuff, it's like definitely viable. And yeah, it's alt for highlighting. Tab opens up uh, this. I mean, you can remap the buttons, obviously. But yeah, if you hold Alt, it highlights bootables. Doesn't highlight everything that's interactable. So you still have to, like, mouse over, right? Like, this is interactable over here. But if I hold Alt, it's not showing anything, right? It's showing this backpack, but that's it. Touch nothing without knowing its purpose. But I want to push the button! Okay, we'll, we'll push the button in a second, but when we've got a story reason for it. Damn it! Someone alive in here. Funk, funk, funk. I like the uh, the distortion shader on this too. Let me out! You! Get me out of this damn thing! We have no time for stragglers. No, I mean, we, we do help people. Again, we're gonna default to that. You know, we're not like a lawful goody goody whatever, but our. You know, we preserve life when we can. Um, there, we'll look for a latch that might open the lid. This won't work. The construction is too alien. 
Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? I look around. There must be some way to get this thing open. Try that contraption next to the pod. They did something to it when they sealed me in. Hurry! Please! Now there's a contraption right over here. So we'll touch it. The console appears dormant. Look for a switcher release. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first. But then you spy an empty socket. I'm going to hit the machine. Nothing. The console remains dormant. Well, now it's time. That didn't work. So let's let's push one of these. What could possibly go wrong? Another mystery. Psionic energy radiates from the prisoners, but they do not react. Wait, oh. Let's push this one. Machine made them hostile. Oh! I thought it killed them. I guess one of the buttons kills them and one of the buttons aggro them? Oh! Time to strike. Let my name be known. Didn't die this time. I like that you can shove as a bonus action. That's always fun. I don't think that actually helped us in any way whatsoever. In fact, it probably made the situation slightly worse. But it's hilarious. So I don't think the lures can reach. We don't have a ranged weapon. Thunder wave. I do. You know what? We never did our druid spells. It's okay. That's fine. We can change the preparation. We did our we did our cantrips, but I never actually tweaked our druid spells. I'd completely forgotten. Well, maybe I can get a thunder wave. Wonder if the gods are watching me. I did pick up a cross, but we don't have proficiency in that. I don't think. No, I can't reach you. Yeah, not proficient. So, I mean, we could use it and just be kind of crap at it. It does, I believe, use your standard action to go and equip. But yeah, it'll be there for next turn. That's fine. Twitch integration doesn't seem to be active right now. Might be because I'm on a press build. Oh, advantage because of the unbalanced. That's cool. I guess the shoving people about um, enables some extra stuff. Oh, loot, loot, loot bottle anything of use I wonder we might be able to craft with that candle all right generation working on shroud stream yeah he might I'm wondering if he updated to the the full release or yeah I don't know I've got the I've got the thing running um let me hang on oh there we go hold on now it's on. There we go. It's like it was set up and everything, but um, I had to hit the re the activate button again. That's locked. Burnished necklace, probably just for money. Dark mind. Let's read this manuscript. Read. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a good Yankee warrior and centuries of darkness. So yeah, you can check out my party and my build and stuff like that. That's really cool. In theory, it will also allow voting on uh, on decisions. Although, I'll mostly, we'll see, we'll see what people have to say. I'm hoping it doesn't force anything. I'm hoping it just shows up as vote. Oh, we got a key there, so that might be for that reliquary. many hosts of these gay infected dazed woman is trapped inside the pod she doesn't notice you no we're looking for something to help uh um well we don't know their name yet but got to hurt 
potions. Slave mind. Another brain. Dead thrall here. Oh, an Eldritch Ruin! Strange energy buzzes through this alien object. You're sure you've never seen any of the like, yet part of you recognizes it as a component of some bigger machine. This might unlock those controls next to the pod. And there's a button. I mean, we gotta push the button, right? Place your hand on the console. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. Rarely seen such a big drop in download speed on Steam. Yeah, I suspect the servers are being hammered pretty hard by the, this 100 plus gig download. And I do that. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. <laughs> it is lupus. <laughs> Change her. Changed at the pull of a lever. How? If we are not purified, this may be our fate. Corellan, preserve me. That cannot be our fate. All right. Now we run back this way. Ignore the intellect of our. Hang on, before we free her, do we have the key for this? Yay! <laughs> Loot! <laughs> Priorities, right? Okay, I found a thing. Let's see if it works. The console appears dormant. Insert rune into the socket. It's going to be like a USB, though. So you try one way, it doesn't work. You try the other way, it doesn't work. You go back to the first way, and all of a sudden it works. The console hums to life. But what is its purpose? Will it free the captive or transform her like that other unfortunate? <laughs> that would be bad. I could try an Arcana, but I've got a minus one. But let, let's give it a go. Take a closer look at the powered up console. I still get to add my guidance, which is nice. Woo! Success! Pulsing glow and organic lines of the device make it seem more like a beating heart than a machine. This device is different from the one that caused the other captive to transform. Perhaps it will open the nearby pod. Well, Shadowheart, this is either going to save you or kill you. I'm sure it's fine. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. Lose our illithid powers. Being implanted with a Mind Flare tadpole is a fate worse than death, isn't it? We do have good wisdom. We actually have to make a roll for it. You know, guidance, wisdom. Yeah, difficult task is a two. So you can technically fail, right? If you have no wisdom bonus, no guidance, and you roll a one. Or even if you roll a two, but you have a minus one wisdom, you could fail. You feel the biomechanical brain of the console. Process yeah, we don't know this person's name yet. And yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. And boom. <laughs> Face plant. I love how we don't catch her. At last. Done for. Yeah, subtitles giving names. Of the, that's always a, a spoiler problem on TV shows. That damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with your thoughts weariness. to my thoughts. Your mind to my you mind. Have a gift with you. You keep dangerous company. Dangerous company is what you need in a fight. No, that's not bad. You got a problem with the Yankee. Did you feel that just now? We were in each other's heads. You know what? I'm going to go with three. I did. It must be because of those parasites they put in us. They'll have to wait. I need to get off this ship alive first. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. It's a <laughs> Jiff Yankee. <laughs> um... Yeah, no, tell it. Absolutely. All right, let's get going. I'm Dolores. Shadowheart. One moment. Did you forget something in your pot? I'm sorry, is that a d20? 
What's that? It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm now. Should get my big D20 out. Lead on. Hey. Oh, she got catch up XP. I'm like, how did she get 75 and I got five? But it's just catching her up. All right. So that's the way we went before to uh, get the um, get the thing to unlock. I like the viewing distance, you know, considering the game, you know, it's kind of top down. They don't, they don't have to allow for very much viewing distance, but still pretty satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do the uh, kill the demon for the big flaming sword thing, but we'll talk about it when we get there. Um, before I go through, let me check my spells. Now, here's one of the things. I don't know if there's a short, like, a, an obvious way to go to, like, your spell page. I mean, other than loading your inventory. And then up here, spellbook. I mean, it's a little, it's a little hidden like. Um, I'm going to not have uh, good berries. All right. What I like for combat healing, I like healing word, right? Because it's only bonus action and it's a range thing. It's not a touch. It doesn't heal as much as cure wounds. But to me, this is the perfect thing to just get someone up after they've fallen, which seems kind of strong. K for book. Okay. But there's, I'm not wrong, right? There's no like button just obvious on the toolbar. Like, there's Druid here, but it's just filtering down the spells. No. Um, Fairy Fire's quite cool. Because I believe it's an AoE as well. Yeah, all targets in the light turn visible. Attack rolls against them had advantage. This seems pretty strong. And, uh, like, part of me from playing Divinity Original Sin thinks, like, create or destroy water might be really useful in this game. I don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it doesn't. Um... I could use something like Ice Knife to have a ranged attack because I am like just doing Shillelagh for melee stuff. I might want a ranged attack option, which Ice Knife would su uh, supply. I don't think I'll use Thunder Wave. I mean, it's when it when there's a good opportunity for it, it's amazing. But a lot of times it's not going to be available. Um, I do kind of like the idea of running around with speak with animals constantly. One of the things that's great, if you play a cleric and you do the nature domain, you have speak with animals and animal friendship prepared all the time and it comes up so much so much maybe I don't need create a water Terrifier is pretty useful although we won't need it right now you know what I'll do this I'm gonna get to speak with animal and animal friendship just prepped for role-playing purposes but we'll have ice knife so we have an option of a range attack and we'll have healing word for this that's gonna have to be fine uh, and then we can check out shadow heart and her memorization so she'll also have heal or um, healing word could you inflict wound which is a touch attack Shield of Faith was really good. Guiding Boat for some range stuff. You know what? I'll probably just leave her with that. That's going to be okay. So I want to do that just because I think when you do this, it resets all your spells and everything. There we go. Are prepared spells basically when combat starts? Uh, no, so prepared spells are like your memorizations. At the ready. Right, as a druid... Oh. As a druid or a cleric, you don't learn spells. You know all your spells. But you still have to prepare a subset. Oh, it's always nice when people get along, isn't it? It's always a good sign when you enter an area and there's like an autosave. You're like, oh, so we're about to do something, right? Nom, 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 nom. Dude, you got a little something kind of, yeah, everywhere. Draw. You don't need to rest to reset prepared spells. We must escape. You can just change them anytime. Do it. We will deal with the gate. Not five e, but maybe. Connect the nerves. Nerves. We will connect them. Another sound for your mod. Nom nom nom. Yeah, maybe that should be my uh, my treat stream sound. Speaking of, that came in. That came in 30 minutes ago. I haven't got an update yet. Very excited for my uh, my my pizza designed to offend Italians. Spicy Hawaiian pizza with a poppy a pep, a poppy seed crust. Delicious. All right. So over here we do have the mind flare fighting the demon. Now, you can kill this guy for his giant flaming sword. I don't know if I'll try. I gotta say, with a four-player uh, multiplayer party, it was, pre it was pretty easy to do uh, recently, but 
Otherwise, I'm not sure. All right, Brain, you go and kill this imp. Or sesame seed crust, not poppy seed. Sesame seed crust. You're right, poppy seed would just be weird. Still on my feet. Nightcap and Mitchwin, thanks for the subs. Well, way back here. Uh, should have to run through fire. I wonder if we move out of the way. Oh, no! I want to select Shadowheart. Whoops. Fast. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. I think we, we get our spells back after we rest as well. So I'm actually just tempted to, like, use some spell slots here. Unless I use them against the demon. And that's Run Paladin playthrough. Yeah. Here, you know what? We're not gonna do it. I, I don't wanna I, I want I wanna do things a little harder. So yeah, I'm gonna use my spells on these little dudes. Yes, nice. Oh my right, and then we'll move up. Making forward progress towards the helm. If this is worth the cost. Well, I guess I can select people over here too. Time to strike. Let me avoid the fire. Move up. Switch to the bow. Ah, low damage. Survival is all that matters. Getting some drop frames? Uh, so I'm not getting any over here. Zero percent drop frames, so it might just be your connection, or it could be the uh, yeah the Twitch servers, in general having a hard time. I don't think looting takes an action, does it? Doesn't seem to. Now, I don't have to do much damage to kill it. I guess we'll give it a try with the crossbow. Oh, I'm 80%. Really, I'm not proficient, but these imps are really easy to hit, I suppose. Yeah, I guess we'll, I will have to add something to what game about Karmic Dice. Yes, we've turned it off. Not that it's supposed to be a problem in the release version. Um, let's dash. Now, not too far, because it will summon some extra dudes. Got to press on. Let's move here. And yeah, we're not we're not going to go for the weapon. Still breathing, despite everything. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm the wood elf. I got all the increased movement speed here. Face animation for like characteristics. Yeah, you can right click and do examine. Get some info on things. He's resistant to just about everything. But yeah, very, definitely beatable. Oh, text message. Or is about to arrive. Um. Oh, that's annoying that it's still the same round. I have a bonus action, but yeah, I can't. I can't shoot again. I could prep the shillelagh. I mean, I guess that's that's fine. I'll use my bonus action to prep the shillelagh for next round. Okay. Can you do a rush attack all the way here? No, that's a bit too much of an ask. Oh, no, you can. No, not enough moving points. Yeah, we'll only reach there. All right. So, yeah, we can just uh, dash. No move up as much as we wait. can. Pay attention, there's a new subscriber. Okay. <laughs> hey, Lexanthus. Thanks for the sub. And final people in BG3. Yeah. Um, did Essentra say something? Of course, text comes now. I just sat back from checking. As I say, I can get up and check in a sec, but I assume she's probably up again. I am Fury. Oh, it's just, okay, it's only us uh, that can act right now. Well, you know what? Congratulations, you're gonna dash and get up in here, maybe tank some hits for us. There's a hell bore in between our party now. There we go. I am Fury, I am death. Fury, 
I am death. Yep, yeah, do your rush attack. I will not know failure. And then while you're here, loot. Loot the dead mind flare. I will give it. So say so I don't think I can rush attack. I don't know if it's because of the weapon she's got or a class thing that gives her the rush. It's, I would suspect actually it might be the weapon because they do have different um, different abilities depending on what weapon you have, but it might be the class. I'm sorry, is there an AoE effect on this? Oh, it does. I don't want to injure. I don't want to injure us. That seems bad. All right, we'll just crossbow. Necromancer available in G3. Yeah, so, I mean, you can just play a you just play a wizard and you specialize in necromancy, right? Oh, one HP. Where's my one HP emotes, you guys? Focus. Have to keep going. All right, I'm gonna guiding bolt this thing. Nice. We're getting sieved. You play with a solo player? So, um, one thing I don't, uh, I don't know if, if you play solo, I don't think you get more XP, uh, whereas you did in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Like, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, you got, like, fixed XP for something, and it got divided among your party. So if you're a solo person, you would get it all. Um, I don't think that's the case here, but it wouldn't surprise me. There's gonna be some people who are gonna end up soloing everything. All right, we're gonna get Delures here. Never a dull moment. To be the person who... Yeah. Dash up and interact with this console. So we can see ourselves in the cutscene. Time to press ahead. Um... Uh, essential, I'll go and grab it in one second. And I'm, I'm gonna go up go up and, uh, and pee. The helm's alien Trying to stay really hydrated. You've made it in time. Bill stream does show up on the BJ3 Drops Enable Streams page. Oh, good. Thanks, Demonac. Dargon! Oh, look at those consummate S's. Hey, Walter. Oh, we gotta go and boing it! Boing it! Yeah, yeah. Stupid gravity. It's funny when you're a gnome or a halfling in this cutscene. Because <laughs> it just feels like you're getting bounced around that much more, you know? Get ready! Boing! Boing it! <laughs> web surfaces can in web you. In web? Hmm. Arrows can be useful in more than just a fight. Shoot a hinge to bring down a something. I'm just going to wait until we land, and then we're going to take a two-minute break. I will go and grab some of the pizza that was sent in. Uh, oops. Why does this page always insist on refreshing? Uh, that was sent in by Parduke. We're all going to get up and stretch our legs. Everyone's going to get a glass of water. Prehydrate. Big boom. <laughs> that look. Oh. And game over. We've just died. Fail the hidden quick time event. <laughs> yeah, see y'all tomorrow. We'll roll a new character. I can smell the ash. So it was a living being, so it smells like like 
charred bacon. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Um, I'm going to check myself before I wreck myself. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. Yeah, other than my infection, I'm more or less intact, too. But it'll all be Stupid for nothing toe. if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. Assume charred nautiloid smells more fishy. <laughs> all right, what we're going to do here is uh, we are going to step away for a second. I'm going to... Actually, I don't need to refill my water bottle. That's good. But I do need to empty my internal water bottle. I'll come back with some some lovely pizza. And we are going to move into Act 1. We're done the prologue. Be right back. Enjoy the chair. All glory to the chair. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. All hail chair, all hail chair. All right. Did everyone get up? Did everyone stretch? Did everyone get another glass of water? Did everyone get a slice of pizza that someone sent you on treat stream? Oh, that's just me. Okay. Lovely spicy Hawaiian pizza, some jalapeno, big chunks of ham, and of course, pineapple. Hmm. Did you know Hawaiian pizza was invented in Canada? by a Greek person, because that's how the world works. Mmm. Wonderful. <laughs> Everything about my channel, it says the drops are enabled. I don't know why people aren't getting progress on it. Everything is and should be enabled for drops. But I don't know. I could stop and restart the stream, but I'm not gonna, so. Everyone blames Sweden for it? Well, Sweden's a place that's got, like, the banana curry pizza, right? <laughs> mm. 
U.S. has cultural melting pot, Canada has the chaos pot. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, tikka masala. Glaswegian curry place. Tikka masala is delicious, too. All right. So we have crash landed from the Nautiloid. And some big old tentacles over... Chasm? Hmm. Breathe deep and move. Fresh water. There must be a settlement nearby. My boots red? Is it because we're in the water? But why? Why would it turn red? Maybe just to show that it's submerged? Interesting. Mm-hmm. Difficult terrain. Oh, maybe. Well, it's my gold now. Hey, Shadowheart. She, she did. I'm going to steal her die. Reach for the artifact. Now, that's, that's not us. We're going to try to wake her. You're alive. I'm alive. How is this possible? Was it a D10? If it's a D10, then it's a non-platonic solid. Ugh. Um, D10's the only die that is not a platonic solid. Um, yeah, I was hoping you might know. I... Remember the ship. I remember falling. The nothing. Do you have any idea where we are? No. I don't recognize this place. But anything's an improvement on where we just came from. First things first. We need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. Indeed. Better get a move on then. Farewell. Oh, that's how you start a community poll. Okay. We'll remember that. At some point, we'll do some voting and see what people have to say. Yeah, the twin generation is great. Everything's working. Except maybe not the drops. Eh. And it's not... I have, We have it set up on my channel, and apparently we show up on the list of drop-enabled channels. But... So it's probably a Twitch thing. So, we? You want to stay together? I mean, I'm not opposed to this. You know what? What happened to our gift friend? You might want to reconsider calling her a friend. Looks like she ran off without us. Yeah, with this Twitch integration, it again makes me really bitter that we don't have Twitch integration in something like Crusader Kings 3, you know? Do you want to stay together, I take it? We need each other. And we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. Yeah, that no, sounds great. Let's get moving. One thing. Just before we go. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. I wanted to thank hey, you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. Did they change her voice Are actor too from early beta? Or do I just have a vastly different memory of what her voice sounded like? Because I know they changed Will. They rewrote the character of Will considerably and got a new voice actor to redo everything. Hmm. Oh, we got level ups right away. Excellent. Same voice actor, just less aggressive tone. Okay, so, because I was going to say, wasn't she like, yeah, really aggro originally? And like, listen, we've already got Lazale. Like, how many just aggro, angry people are we going to have in this game? Subclass feature, wild shape. Nice, we get that immediately. Lovely. Natural recovery, replenish expended spell slots while out of combat. Mm-hmm. We gain a cantrip. Maybe I'll go ahead and grab a thorn whip so that we do have a, a range option. I don't particularly care about like resistance, like you pre-buff and it's concentration. You can only have the one. Yeah, I think I like the thorn whip. Or we could try the produce flame. You know what? Let's give it a go and see how that feels like. Wait, thank you. I was like, hold on. Aren't I supposed to be able to pick a subclass? Yeah, never mind. Okay. 
thank you for catching that. Wow, we would have just reloaded. Um, so yeah, I don't want Circle of Land. Circle of Land is great if you're going to go with a caster-oriented focus. But I like that the Circle of Spore as well. Viewing death, necrosis, fungal growth, and sporulation is just another part of life. You can manipulate such spores to augment yourself and harm your foes. But we're going to go with Circle of the Moon. Druid sworn to the moon, drawn its mercurial nature to transform to massive creatures and primal elementals. So yeah, there you go. Adds a bonus action. You can assume the form of a beast. You can transform twice per short rest. So for us, transforming is a bonus action. I believe otherwise it is a standard action. Yep. So we do it as a bonus, which is great. Action, Lunar Men. Expend spell slots to regain hit points while in wild shape. So self-heal. And I think we will get better forms. I'm not sure if that's true. Right now the forms are the same. Oh, there we go. Wild shape bear. Literally the whole reason why with this character is to turn into a bear. So absolutely want that. Um, and we did get an extra spell slot. So it added in fairy fire, which I'm kind of okay with. The spores are the most fun guys of the druids. Oh, Pontus. That's terrible. Terrible. All right, Shadowheart. Yeah, an extra spell slot, channel divinity charge, got turn undead, invoke duplicity. Distract your enemies with an illusion. Within three meters of the illusion, attack rolls have advantage for you and your allies. Ooh, quite cool. We could also just change class, right? Level one cleric plus something else, you can just multi-class, but Generally speaking, with spellcasters, you, you kind of want to keep going down and get just focus on the one. Um, it's added Cure Wounds, which I don't think we need. Because the thing is, in 5e, we can short rest outside of combat, spend hit dice to heal up. Um, so I like, for in combat, just action efficiency. I, I prefer to lean on Healing Word than Cure Wounds. We could do some Bless things. We're just, just three creatures who can't actually bless the whole party. I think we're going to do protection, we're going to do evil, or shield of faith. I mean, they're both a defensive thing that requires concentration, so having two is a little bit redundant. Um, you know, she started with uh, inflict wounds, memorized. Well, maybe we'll keep the inflict wounds going on. So I think I will do a create and destroy water as an option for maybe dealing with terrain stuff, putting out fires. So let's go with this. I mean, we can change those whenever, so that's not really a big deal. Three other creatures. Yeah, but it's not yourself, is it? Is it yourself and three other creatures? No, bless up to three creatures. Yeah, so it's the whole party except yourself or, you know, something. And it doesn't cover summons either. <laughs> All right, I could do a restart of the stream. Let's let's find out. If we, let, let's do it, because otherwise all chat's going to be talking about is freaking drops. Is that, is that all you're here for? Drops, not the game? Okay, let's restart the stream. And now. <laughs> 